Greetings friends, Patrick here. I'm going to try out a new kind of video. Uh, this is, I'm looking forward to this. This is my first, uh, what's called a, a straight line mission. Uh, I'll put uh, more details below in the description to this video, uh, depending on whatever platform you're watching this on in the future. Uh, but essentially, uh, there's a gentleman named Tom Davies from England uh, who had started to popularize this concept I think there's a lot of potential in it. Um, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, and I'm just going to walk you through my uh, first adventure here that I recorded. And, uh, and I'm trying to do this a little bit different. I'm trying to kind of do this as a walkthrough with uh, my little dashboard here showing the map on the side and then showing my, my video just to try to uh, make it a little bit more entertaining and, and try to come up with a way to... Uh, treat it like a lightning uh, straight line mission uh, where you know we're going just a, a few miles here and we're trying to go from one point from point A to point B as straight as possible. Um, so uh, just to set the scene a little bit here uh, this is a I went through a park and I did go through a park that encompasses a ski hill uh, so the ski hill is obviously uh, private property. Maybe that's not obvious. Um, in my state, uh, in Minnesota, um, you if there are no if there are no no trespassing signs, uh, you can walk through the land. The, it's, the law is very strict, as far as my understanding. On if there's a sign, you can't go through. Um, I did not see any signs, uh, so I felt okay about going through this, but I would caution anybody watching uh, to be very careful about that type of thing and, and know, uh, you know what the penalties are in your part of the world. Um, it could be a very expensive problem or very uh, big hassle for you. Uh, anyway, that's my understanding. We'll see, we'll see what happens in the future here, but uh, this is just a beautiful region. Um, it's about a almost 2,000 acre park along the St. Croix River. And uh, this is my starting point. That yellow line is the ideal line that I was supposed to be following from start to finish there. Um, I'm actually looking south here just so I can follow the line as I go along, just to uh, not disorient you too much if you're watching. Um, this is the ski hill. Um, so my objective was to start there and go and follow that line as quickly as possible. Uh, sorry, as closely as possible. I mean, it'd be nice to get it done too. Uh, so I was kind of, I wasn't just sort of taking a bunch of rests. But uh, the point is to go as close to that line as possible. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to play this video, go through and walk th walk <clears throat> along with the map as I play that video, so I can show you where I was and some of my thoughts uh, going through my head as I as I walk through it, just to try to make it a little spicier, try to spice up the whole, the whole journey. Uh, then at the end, uh, you know, assuming that I finished it, uh, I'm not going to tell you whether I finished it or not. Um, I'm going to give myself a score. There's a way of scoring uh, the, the line that you did walk. And, uh, and then we can walk through that thing, which is, which is right here in this little console. Uh, but I can, I'm, I'm not going to tell you if I finished it or not, but I'm going to tell you it was, um, a very heart pounding experience, a lot more heart pounding than I thought it would be. Um, I found things in the forest that I wouldn't have thought were there. Uh, this is a park I've been to hundreds of times, if not thousands of times. And there were things that I found in the forest that were just, you know, I, I must have walked by them thousands of times before, hundreds of times before. And I just never knew they were there. It was, it was, just, it was very interesting. It was, it felt, it's a park that I've been to a lot, but it felt like I had never been there before. Uh, and I got really disoriented. Um, I also had an encounter with law enforcement. So I'm not going to tell you again whether I finished out this trek, but there was an encounter with law enforcement. You're going to see that in the video. It was way more fascinating and more interesting. But my point is this is a lot more interesting than I thought it was going to be, and it was quite, it's uh I hope that you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy watching this as much as I enjoyed walking it. All right, so uh, to get this thing started, um, I over here on the left, I have zoomed in and I'm showing again my ideal path 
in yellow. So I'm supposed to be following that yellow path all the way to the end and then my actual path in red. So uh, we can kind of try to compare based on the video where I am and I can just sort of make some commentary as we go along. I try to speed up some of the parts of the video where I'm just sort of walking along to, to make this a little more interesting. But let's go ahead and get this started. All right, here I am at the entrance to Afton State Park along 50th Street in Afton, Minnesota. And I am about to embark along a straight line mission going completely straight in that direction without wavering within a certain uh, tolerance level. I'm not sure what that tolerance level is going to be. I'll have to figure that out later on. But uh, basically I am at a start point. Not sure if you can see that on camera. Uh, start point that I had mapped out and I'm going to start heading in after uh, routing this on uh, on my uh, GPS here. So let me just get that started and then I'm going to get going into the woods. So I'm turning the tracker on. My old school GPS here. All right. Navigate out of that. Back to the map. All right. And here I go. There's no base map on this GPS. It's just a white background or yellow background. You can see I uh, just got started and shows my route in black with the actual line in pink and I can already see it's super easy to get right off and right away I've got some wildlife up here, a deer. sheer amount of concentration it takes to stay on the lines it is kind of surprising. Obstacle here is probably better if I go right straight over it. And then I brought these sunglasses, not because it's sunny, but because I anticipate going through sticks a lot. And same with this hood that I have on. Let's see if I can put that on. All right, doing okay so far. So a lot of a lot of this beginning stuff was just confusion. Oh, let's see what we have up ahead. I'm also Having... racing against the clock in terms of uh, sunshine here. It's about uh, maybe 5:30. Sun goes down at 640. So it's just confusion having never done this before. Just how does the GPS work? Um, where am I along the line? It's kind of hard to get a sense for that, especially when you're first starting off. But yeah, as you can see, I kind of. It's going to be a lot easier that. if I can keep some kind of forward momentum to uh, be able to tell exactly where I'm going in terms of the GPS. GPS kind of seems to work a little bit better if it has a little more forward momentum. Yeah, that was for sure true. Uh, and I've, I've done two more uh, straight line missions since this mission and found that, you know, having that forward momentum is pretty, is pretty critical. But I, I guess right away you can already tell I'm deviating off of the line uh, a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and take a quick measurement. Wow, mushrooms. So I'm, I'm showing, uh, I was 13 meters off the line already. And uh, it's not, this isn't super challenging stuff. Oh, I really don't want to have to go through that. And in fact, right now I'm way off. I'm, I'm already, right now as I'm walking, I'm just walking through, I'm not even walking through the garage. <clears throat> but here we go. So I, I said here on the video that I, I really didn't want to do this. A common theme is oh, God. brush sucks. Just 
a wall of branches. And you just, you want to, you really feel the need to go, wow, well, I unnecessarily walked through a bunch of brush, but you really feel the need to go through this type of thing. These open fields feel great compared to going through stuff hitting you in the face. Um, maybe that sounds obvious, but uh, it really, it really gets drilled into your head as you're out there doing it for miles and miles. All right, crashing through the brush here. Okay, so now that I'm in the middle of my track, I can compensate by moving either, either left or right pretty easily without having to worry about <clears throat> making this track too far off. Okay, so I'm gonna... This, this is kind of funny here. I guess I didn't slow it down, but there were just some random people walking along and uh, I'm sitting there, I've got a GoPro on my head, I've got a microphone strapped to my arm because that's how I recorded the audio this time. I just probably look super weird and I just come crashing out of the woods and <laughs> go directly walk into this random field and go into the woods again. So that was, that was probably pretty weird for those people. Anyway, here's the- Beautiful. Autumn leaves. Beautiful. So that's the, I'm already going way off and I'm, I know the hill kind of contours down to the right here. Take a quick measurement. All right. Oh, I can smell the deer. I can smell the poop. The poop over right here. Pee. All right. Getting towards the bottom of this ravine. I know this ravine has a stream in it. There's some poop right there. I know the stream ha this uh, this ravine has a stream in it in the springtime, but it's bone dry right now. But we'll have another stream we'll go across later on. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead right for that tree so I don't have to keep looking at my GPS. Uh, <laughs> yeah I didn't it's Another theme is it's very disorienting, disorienting to be in a forest. And then it's even more disorienting to be in a forest and have these up and down valleys. Uh, you just really get it lost. You really get a, you know, lose sense of direction. And even though I've got this GPS and it's just pointing exactly where I need to go, if I don't check it, if I'm not just constantly have the thing like in front of my face, I, it's very easy to just kind of get off track. And it's easy to sort of get ADD and see these little deer paths and, and want to follow those paths, frankly, because they're easier and you don't want to go over, I don't know, this giant log thingy that's going to scratch you. Um, so again, my first trip, <clears throat> haven't really, didn't know how much that would impact me. I was just kind of going for it. Um, one thing I will say though, this is this is a great time to, of year, beautiful time of year to do it. Um, maybe it would be better to do, easier to do in the winter, uh, but I just love to see these leaves and it was so beautiful out there, all the colors and um, the leaves on the ground. You can see kind of the, the colors flashing by, red, yellow. Um, I don't even think this is the peak weekend uh, to be doing this. It was just, it was just great to be out there and it wasn't, it wasn't too cold, it wasn't too warm. Um, I had that jacket on, so that was kind of, uh, you know, made me sweat a little bit, but I'm kind of uh, run behind where I think I might have been at, at this point in the, in the video here. But yeah, it was uh, just a nice temperature to be doing it, having a, a full jacket on too. Um, Could have been even colder for that, quite honestly. But that jacket I used to, you know, stop from getting scratched and... Um, that was just uh, great conditions for this type of thing. <laughs> well, good thing there was nobody taking a shit right now. That would have been embarrassing for both of us. And my path goes right through this bathroom. But... I'm not gonna climb over it. I'm just gonna go here. Oh, this is beautiful. 
All right, during during this whole walk through the forest that you've seen, I've been uh, basically here still. I haven't even reached, I've not reached this area, in other words. Wow, I don't like that volume. I don't like that sound. Um, what the heck is this here? Oh. Oh, I feel so disoriented. I don't know what trail this is. The deer don't seem to use this area as much as far as I can tell so far. It's just not very <clears throat> walked on. That trail connects over to the right somewhere. Yeah, I, I know I'm at the bottom of this. I'm approaching I that. I don't know what's happening, right. but I'm showing is bring off to the right again. So I'm just gonna go take that up. <clears throat> it's more convenient. Gives me a little bit left. Yeah, I was uh, obviously quite far to the right at that point. Um, let's see how if I can measure that because it's kind of helpful for me to remember. Yes, yeah, it's about 50 meters off. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because when you're there, you don't feel the 50 meters. Um, you're just looking at your GPS and you see a pink line. You see you're on the side of that pink line. And um, I'm sure there's fancier GPSs out there that uh, could tell you a lot more information, but um, yeah, I I just did not have that level of orientation with with the GPS that I had. All right, so now I made it up on this hill. Um, feeling great. Uh, it's always great to go into the clearing. Overcompensated to the left as I left the as I exited the forest, and then obviously had to overcompensate again before entering the forest again. But yeah, I just kind of keep swaying off of the line um it just it just happened so now this is this was kind of nice i i anticipated this was going to be very difficult this was a really steep drop for some reason i thought it was going to be a lot steeper and more difficult than it was but it was actually great because there wasn't as much stuff hit me in the face there wasn't as much bramble and branches um look at these bones that's crazy Deer bones. So much of them. Oh yeah, there's a skull. I'm getting a little distracted here. Wow. What was that? Deer probably. I guess it must have its body must have been here and then it Yeah, it was a long time ago, so it kinda decomposed and now it's just bones. Yeah, there's some other fragments. Oh, that's crazy. All right, I gotta keep going. I got distracted, I got off course. And there's a golf ball. Sweet. I'm finding so many great things on this journey. Another, wait a minute, it's another skull. Yeah, that's definitely a deer skull. Wow. Crazy time ago. All right. And now uh, in front of a ski hill. Uh, so that's private property. Although I don't see any trespass, no trespassing signs. So that's why I'm feeling okay about doing this. Yeah, this is, this is the part in the video where I I started to feel like hour, more nervous. Seven. It's May 6.30, which means I maybe have about another 10 minutes of light. Um, yeah, as I, as I said, going up that hill between the two ski lifts. Now I hear people. 
Oh, shoot. Alright, what I don't want to do is get out into the open here and then have people see me tell me to stop. And I can't hear very well over there because it's, uh, because of the stream. I definitely, I definitely hear people. <clears throat> I'm gonna put my GPS away because I know where I need to go. Oh my god! I see cars. Oh man! I don't know who they are. I don't know if they're employees of this place, if they're guests, if they have some kind of wedding. But I just do not want to be seen. So that I can just get across this hill and then up between those ski lifts. <clears throat> this is, uh, I, I just did not think there was going to be anybody here. All right, so what I'm going to do right now, what I'm going to do right now is jump to the other side and try to peek my head out assess the situation so I can at least get a visual of what's going on over there and then uh, maybe I'll be able to see whether the uh, coast is clear and uh, and just go this guy is very red and I think again I probably only have about a half an hour of light or maybe less all right so here we go we're gonna jump first All right, well, I, I hit the water, but uh, my boots are uh, waterproof enough. All right, I see, I, I see just uh, a few cars seem to be stopped, so I think if I just kind of slowly walk, I won't draw any attention to myself. I, I know there's a camera by that building I can see, but uh, it's not pointed anywhere towards me. Screaming means they're playing, which means they're distracted and occupied and having no fun. Okay. Alright. At some point, I'm just gonna run because. And I just, it just kept on going towards me. And uh, so I just booked it. And I'm, I'm heading up towards, I was still worried actually. I wanted to really get out of there as fast as possible because I didn't know if there's gonna be a, a four wheeler or something. I know they have four wheelers, they have all sorts of security. So I was just trying to get out of this place as soon as I could. And I was aiming for what I thought, where I thought I needed to go which was uh, between these two lifts. But that obviously was, was not correct. It was pretty far to the right. I had a, a kind of a mental image in my mind of what the map looked like. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How much on the line I still am. I was really far to the right. Sorry. Yeah, I was really far to the right. I think I'm still on the pink line, which you probably can't see right now. Uh, oh, I don't know if you can see that, but I skimmed the right-hand side of my trail oh. for quite a ways. But I just barely stayed on. <clears throat> oh. That was a rush. The black SUV. Black SUV definitely... Curious about 
There's a bit of black SUV. Whew. There's a black SUV. Very curious about what I was doing. But I just ran up the hill. In the ski area, I'm not sure if this is part of the park or the ski area here, this, this trail that I'm walking on. Evidently, uh, based on this border, it looks like I'm still in the ski area, but I thought I was uh, free enough to, to be able to, now, now I'm back in the park for sure. This is the, this is the road. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I made it out. This isn't the end of the journey. There's still, there's still more, something else is gonna happen. Now I'm up here. You can just see the beautiful sunset. I just wanted to slow down the video there. Uh, exiting the forest again. Still racing against the clock in terms of uh, the sundown happening. And partly just, I don't have a problem walking in the dark. It just so I wouldn't have any video anymore to show. So that's not, not as interesting. Here I'm go going towards the end of this. I'm getting really close to the end. Yeah. You know where you're yep. Got a GPS. Are you over here? No, I parked on the other side of the park. Okay, how long I'm gonna go to the very end and then I'm going back. Okay. I'm going to the very end yeah. and then I'm going back. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so basically, uh, I thought they called the cops on me or called the the DNR or something. I thought that might have happened <laughs> or would have. And um, that was in the back of my mind. But he was just he was just checking on me. Kind of veered off a bit towards the end. Oh, look, they have some cones they put up for me. Great. Would have been nice if I... Would have been nice if I uh, parked my car here. Or if somebody could have done that for me. But. I made it. I don't know. I'm kind of looping around wherever my flag is. But I made it for the most part. And now i got to get back. Hopefully I get some. Blah, blah, blah. I, I don't. Guys. I don't think I say anything really uh, substantial or uh, like insightful after this point. I think I, quite frankly, I'm just, my mind is sort of dull from that run and expending all that energy. But yeah, basically, I, I, as you can see, I, and there's the end of the video, as you can kind of see, I, you know, I looped around the end point. I looped around where I should have been and then I didn't turn my GPS off so that <clears throat> that's that's part of the trail now. That's part of my actual tracks on my GPS that gets saved and then transferred later to a computer. So, um, you know, that that penalizes you on uh, the scoring function here that I'll, I'll go through here in a second. But, um, yeah, that was... I don't know if it seems like it on video, but it was very hair-raising, heart-pounding while I was going through it. Um, just having you go through, I guess you go through a lot of work getting to where you're at. And, um, my venture, my, my travel wasn't even that far. I was about a mile in, but it's just a lot of branches hitting you in the face and you have this goal that you're trying to get to. So you're just like, you really don't want to get caught. You really, the, the stakes are higher than just a regular hike, right? Where if somebody said, hey, you can't go here, you say, okay, yeah, sorry, well, just go around that way. It's There's not a really big penalty involved, but here there's like a score. And if they told me, hey, you got to get out of here, I for sure would be scoring a zero, even on this novice mode. So, um, yeah, there's there's kind of an objective and there's sort of, it, it, it makes you more invested in your hike, if that makes any sense. So that's that's part of what was going through my head. And, 
and part of why it's just so engaging to do this activity. It's just, uh, it's just, I don't know. It's just a fun activity. But now that now that we've you've seen what I did uh, for the end of this video to kind of close out here, let's uh, let's score it out. Let's go through. So I'm, I'll zoom out first on the on the trail. Yeah, I did a few measurements. Uh, this probably this end measurement is just like one of the worst. Yeah, but I I don't know. I, I guess I it didn't look like it was any further than 40 or so meters away. Uh, so, you know, I don't know what the gold standard is, but I, I believe if you're, you know, if you're 100 meters away, you're, you're basically at like a zero, I think. Uh, but there's this tool called Straight Line Mission Score, which uh, you can find not at this website, but um, close that tab. But at this, this tab right here, um, there's an apologies note because they've got an online version. It's not running. Uh, this is by a, a C. Bertel Fitzgerald, whoever that is. Thank you. This thing has been awesome. Um, it's just a brilliant tool, and you can download you can download the the command line version, which I guess maybe I'll go through how to get that command line version operating. How to, how you can use it in another video if uh, if this is interesting to you. Uh, but basically, what's great. And what's brilliant about how the scoring mechanism is set up is the shorter of a, of a, of a run that you do, the more it's going to penalize you for, for deviating, right? So you don't have to do this 100-mile, 100-kilometer uh, course. You can do a 1-kilometer course, and it has a scoring line for you that proportionally uh, is going to compare it to the 100-kilometer. To um, and... It's exponential. Your your uh, your deviation penalty is exponential, right? So if you deviated 120 meters one time, uh, within whatever the measurement along the course is, it's going to penalty. It's going to give you a penalty of 50 minus 50 points, and then you're going to gain points by having a longer uh, a longer route, right? I I think that's how it works. Um, some of the math is here. I'm going to probably go through that in finer detail in the future, but. I just love how it has this kind of exponential penalty thing, and uh, it's just geared for these straight line missions of different of different lengths. It's it's brilliant. So uh, I think they have uh, a donations page from having built software myself. Uh, I encourage anybody, hey, donate to this guy, this gal, guy. Um, you know, it's like if you were to go into a a marathon or a race or something. Maybe you pay for. Maybe you pay thirty bucks. Maybe you pay fifty bucks to register for that race. Uh, so what's ten bucks just to pay this person? He, I know they're paying for servers. They're paying to. I mean, they're they're not making any money on this. I can I can tell. It's they're worth a lot more if they're writing software, and uh, they're just doing this as a labor of love. So I'm I'm certainly going to donate. But <clears throat> um, anyway, back to the actual scoring process. So so what we have here is this. Uh, the straight line mission score, and then I've got my GPS tracks. So what I'm going to do is activate that command line tool here, and it's a little interactive, old school command line tool. What it's asking me now is, please enter uh, the path to a file containing your comma-separated coordinates. So I'm going to have, go ahead and enter that in. File accepted, and then the level I'm going to do is we'll start off with Pro. And uh, so that I just enter in a one, and then it gives you the option of dropping off points. Uh, so you can drop off points if you want to do a hypothetical, like, hey, if I didn't have that curl at the end, maybe I would have done better. I'm not going to drop anything off. I'm just going to score it, see what happens here. And then, uh, and then you can do, uh, you can override the target line, right? So it is going off of, and assuming that this is the stop point, and then it's also going and assuming that. Uh, the start point is is my start point. Um, so obviously, you know, I didn't stop my GPS when I stopped at the stop point. So it's going to assume my line is is different, and it's going to give me uh, possibly a worse score. But whatever, I'm just going to say no here. I'm just going to say no for overriding everything, and uh, I got a zero. Uh, basically, got a zero. So. Uh, what it set, does is it calculated my score. Target line length was 261 meters. Number of points, 346. Max deviation, 72 meters. So on pro mode, 
somehow that max deviation sank me. It sank all my points. Uh, I might have actually only had closer to a 50 max deviation uh, rather than 72, but something tells me uh, even if I had 50, uh, I'm not scoring very well as a pro. So now what, you, what else you can do is you can, you can go in and uh, score yourself as a newbie. So you can say, well, So you can go in and you can say, well, I, I you know, I, I am a newbie. Um, still, I still want to see some sort of score. So what it does for the pro version, it says every meter we're going we're gonna to grade you. On the newbie version, it, it chunks it out into like 25 or 50 meter chunks. Um, so what that does is it's, it's like a lower resolution. So it's not... It's not uh, penalizing you every, for every step, for every wrong step you take. It's penalizing you for every, you know, 100 steps. Kind of like that, if that makes any sense. So let's see if I can give myself a, a newbie score here. Enter in my... Okay, so now I'm going to do three. I guess the amateur is going to be in, in between pro and newbie, obviously. Not going to drop any points. And then I'm going to say no to restarting my line. And uh, now I got a score of uh, 49, or almost 50 percent. So, yeah, a couple big uh, lessons learned here. Uh, you know, one, turn off your GPS or end your track once you get to the actual ending point. Um, that scoring algorithm is going to work out a lot better. Uh, what else? Um, uh, this is a great, this, this sport has great potential. There's enormous potential for becoming a new sport. Uh, you don't have to do a 30 mile hike. You don't have to hike across a country. Um, sorry, Tom. Uh, I love your videos. I'm going to hopefully do something that badass, that amazing someday. But, um, you know, what if you just want to train? Maybe you just want to go a little short distance. You can still give yourself a score and um, you can still make a cool hopefully fun YouTube video with tips and tricks and maybe you've got different gear uh, that you can use and um, you know work your way up um, and um, explore your natural environment there's lots of there's I bet there's lots of really cool places uh, parks nearby that maybe you've been many times before but you're gonna see a different side of it and that's uh, part of what's so appealing to me and so cool and it's also just like there's there's kind of a, this blend of nerdiness there's a blend of sort of planning and and gis and um sports and physical endurance and pain tolerance and a lot of swearing um you know it's just it's just a great activity for a nerdy person like me who's who also kind of is maybe um i was never like a sports star or anything but i kind of like to do like to get outside and like to you know, walk around at least. Um, and I, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, whether you're big or small, or, you know, if you're older, um, younger, uh, there's all sorts of fun to be had, and we can all kind of compete each other, against each other online and compare our scores and track things. So I'm really looking forward to this. I've got a couple other uh, straight line missions that I did that I'll, I'll make some videos on. Um, I'm not going to ask you to subscribe, um, but I will say I'm going to continue to post uh, and hopefully make some good good content here. Uh, this is just a fun activity for me, so um, let me know if you have any suggestions or come back here at some point um, or subscribe if you want to, if it's valuable to you. Um, I'll try my best to, to make some good content around this, this type of thing and around mapping and so forth. So. <clears throat> Thanks so much for watching.